started. Uh, welcome everybody to the Bacchus Community Center for our annual meeting for Citizens for Bacchus AB. I'm glad you all made it out uh, on this cold day and I welcome our Zoomers as well. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, I'm Bob Marquardt. I'm the Vice President of the Citizens for Bacchus AB. Our President Tim Fairchild is unable to be here tonight, but he is here on Zoom. Hello Tim. A couple housekeeping items to, to go through. Uh, those that are on the Zoom, could you make sure that you mute your mics if you're not speaking? That'll allow the frequency to be a little bit louder for everybody as well. If you want to be acknowledged to, to speak, just kind of wave. We've got a couple spotters that'll watch for you. Um, <clears throat> the audience members are welcome to, to join in anytime. Just raise your hand and we'll acknowledge you. We have a roving mic so that you don't have to come up here to speak at the podium. With that, uh, with that, and uh, uh, we'll go ahead and I call a meeting of the annual meeting for the Citizens for Bacchus AB to order. First of all, I'd like to uh, introduce the board members, starting with Tim Fairchild, Patty Milan, Julie Barkowski, Tracy Lunzer, Donna Fredrickson, down in Florida, <laughs> Diane Maxey. Sherry Lassard, John Faith, Kay Arnold, and Gail Rognerud. Thank you. Great. It's a great team. Needless to say, it's been a rough year for, for everybody, but uh, here at the Bagus Community Center, we've been very, very fortunate. We've been able to weather all the storms and challenges, and of course, it's due to our great staff uh, that we've had to kind of fight and keep ahead of all the problems and everything, but even with the canceled events and performances, there's still lots of activity going on. Uh, we've been able to maintain the building for our tenants. There has been activities, there have been things happening, so we were in really good shape. It's, overall, it's been a very, very good year for us. It was you know, kind of a struggle for a while financially, as it always is with nonprofits, but we've been very fortunate. We've had lots and lots of very generous people out there in the state and around the country. I'd also uh, like to introduce or make comments of the, the members who are attending this evening. We have Ivan and Marcia Stewart. We have Pat Edisted. We have Tom Smith, Ward Merrill, John, is it far, far further? Faith, John Faith, I'm sorry John, I can't read the writing. Isaac Meyer and Mary Lee. I'd like to introduce uh, our uh, executive director now, Lois Lundin, who joined us as the executive director in June and she'll go ahead and introduce herself as well as the staff. Hello everybody and welcome. Uh, we're really happy to have you all here tonight for our annual meeting. We'll walk through all of the reports. Uh, Bob will walk through the booklet with you and if there are questions or things you can certainly let us know. Raise your hands and, and questions can be asked. I also wanted to share with the folks who are on Zoom that if anyone wants a copy of the, a paper copy of the annual meeting, that you can just call back us and we will send one to you. The annual meeting report will be on the website and available for everyone to see, but should you want a paper copy, we'd be happy to send it to you upon request. Uh, there are two new faces here at Bacchus that I want to introduce to you. Not everyone has met these ladies yet, um, but they, are, they work in the office with Hua and with me, and I just want to make sure that you all know who they are. So if you want to step in front of the camera, this is Judy Medeiros, and Judy is our new event coordinator. She's doing a great job. She's in charge of everything from... Uh, from the onset of all of our events, but Judy is located in our office and she is handling all of the events. Alyssa Crawford is our office assistant and she really keeps the show going. She takes care of the paperwork, the filing, answers the phones, greets our guests and just does a great job and we're very, very happy to have Alyssa with us. So when you come into the office, you will see Alyssa and Judy as the first people as you walk in the door. Bob? Oh, Harry. How can I forget Harry? Harry has taken on a new role. Harry Batdorf 
has taken on a new role with Bacchus Community Center. He is our buildings, building manager, and he works side by side with our janitor and our custodian, and is really um, spearheading some of our projects, our maintenance items that are happening in the building. Um, we're working with Harry, so Harry, welcome in your new role. How can we forget the business manager? <laughs> Wasa um, Matinsky, I will share a little piece of trivia with you. Um, this past week on Thursday last week, was Thursday, Was celebrated 12 years with Bacchus. Um, she keeps the show running. Um, it's, it's a joy and a privilege to work with her, and uh, so thank you, Wa, and um, I think I have everybody covered now. Well, we don't. I omitted our number one volunteer, oh. Greg Lundin. <laughs> we, we kind of laugh and we tease that when they hired me, they got Greg and they got Erica too. <laughs> it's a good package. First order of business is to approve the minutes from the 2020 annual meeting. You'll find on page four or five, five, four and five of your booklet. I'll just give you a couple minutes to go through. Are there any questions or comments uh, that anybody would like to make? If not, I'll take a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Motion carried. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. Next order of business is the nomination and election of new board members. And that's on page six. Board members that are currently, that are up for renewal are John Faith, Tracy Lunzer, and we have a new addition that's been nominated and recommended by the, by the board is Jim Lyman. Uh, <clears throat> are there any nominations from the floor for additional members? Are there any additional nominations from the floor? Any additional nominations from the floor? If not, we'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the Board of Directors as listed. Do I hear a motion? Thank you, Julie. Second? Thank you, Patty. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We now have three board members are officially termed. Next order of business is a review and discussion of the director's treasurer and the various committees report, starting with the executive director on page eight and going to nine. If you'd like to look through and uh, take a look at that. Any questions or comments? If not, we'll go on to the treasurer's report. It's on page 10 to 16, and we do have the treasurer here if anybody has any questions or comments. No questions? I'd just like to make comments. Very healthy balance sheet. We're very, very, very fortunate. Everybody's worked very hard. We can't rest and just look at those numbers, though. We need to move forward, but we're well placed. <clears throat> Next report is the building used by numbers, pages 17 and 18. And Lois, do you want to make some comments? You can all see that Bacchus has been a very busy place. You would think with all the COVID restrictions that it would have been quiet, but it has not. Um, we have all kinds of activities happening here at Bacchus from our concert series to business training and um, meetings. Bacchus has been busy. So if there are any questions, I would entertain that. Okay, there we go. Next on the, the list is, is uh, operations on page 19. You want to take a look at that. Any questions or any comments by anybody? Next item uh, report is the endowment fund on page 20. I would just like to briefly say that our Pretty excited about the endowment fund. It's setting back us up for a long-term financial stability program. Uh, 
in the next couple of months, we're going to be starting a kind of a launching a campaign for solicitation of, of funds as well as pledges and starting out a kind of a media, let's get the word out campaign. So you'll start seeing something uh, developing here. I'm kind of excited. We've made some contacts with not only individuals, but some organizations and corporations. Well, suddenly we've hit their radar and this is really a positive thing. And I think all of it has to do with all the publicity that our staff has put out there, certainly with our food programs and the publicity, the AB project, all of a sudden we're a real viable entity. Very, very positive and pretty excited about it. Next uh, report to go through is the building and grounds on page 21. Any comments? Next is the arts and programming on pages 22 and 23. Any, any comments or questions? The event coordinator, Lois, would you want to make some comments on that? Uh, because you kind of were in that position and Judy's just starting. Yes, thank you. Um, I did, I want to step back for just a second to arts and programming and let everybody know, remind everyone that we have another show coming up on the 5th of March that will be our last program for the arts and programming season for the 2020-2021. Um, event coordinator, um, yes, I started as event coordinator and now Judy has stepped into that role. It has been very busy. Um, we, are, we are doing some additional things with our event coordinator position in that we're looking at other things that we can offer to the community that would be considered an event. Um, Judy is going through the process right now of getting her serve safe licenses and her permit so that she can test. Um, we're looking for services that we can provide to our community that aren't provided someplace else to help draw folks into Bacchus Community Center. So we're expanding our role of event coordinator a bit. Great, thank you. Next report is the Borealis Bards on page 24. Any comments, questions? The next item on the report is the KCC TV program. We are really very, very fortunate that we've been able to integrate the Darcy Sullivan and programs into the Bacchus, uh, Bacchus system. It's been really, really positive. It's helped us a lot. Darcy has reached out into the community and doing all kinds of innovative, interesting things. Um, she's a performer herself. She gets people excited or whatever. And it's a really just another good outlet for Bacchus to, to get some exposure out in the world. Uh, you know, we are, we're also on the closed circuit TV with the, with the Midco, as well as uh, you know YouTube and whatever. So there's Darcy's got lots of ideas. We've got lots of ideas coming up here in the next year. And so watch for some good things to happen. Ruby's Pantry, another success story on pages 26 and 27. Lois, anything you want to add? It's one of your little baby, your your baby over there. Um, Ruby's Pantry continues to be a very busy place. We did have to move this month's uh, distribution out one week just because of the extremely cold weather. But we have a lot of attendance and a lot of participation. We've changed our entire process. We're much more efficient with the way that we distribute all of the food now. We take everything out to people's cars. It helps us to stay safe, uh, keep our volunteers safe and our guests safe. And we move a lot more food through Bacchus at a much faster pace. All of our guests remain outdoors and we bring the food to them. They really like it. We're seeing a little different audience because um, we have an older crowd that doesn't need to get out of their cars. So people that have any mobility issues really like the new distribution and families with small children can load up their car, their kids in the car and they can, they can drive through the distribution without having to bring their children into the auditorium and then managing the kids while they wait in line. So it's, it's been very positive. Thank you, Lois. We might as well stand up. We've got the next two food items in there. Community Cafe, another extremely wonderful uh, program with a success story. And why don't you lump in summer food program right along with that? Sure, I'd be happy to do that. Community Cafe, um, it, it was really interesting to us when we started. We had a... Um, 
Community Cafe, if I go back to the beginning of COVID, we had to make some changes in how we did Community Cafe for our community. We, um, all of the food, all of the meals are served takeout, so our guests come to the door and pick up. They do not come inside the building, but it has been so well received. When uh, Community Cafe was live in early March, we were serving anywhere between 50 and 70 meals in-house. And as soon as we went, COVID hit, and we went to a pickup style meal, our numbers jumped. We are currently averaging 270 meals every Tuesday and Thursday. We've had some additional grants, so we've been able to improve the food that we're serving. Um, we, it's more nutritious home style food. There is fresh fruit, more vegetables, and dairy with every dinner. Um, and it continues to run really strong. So um, we're very happy about and very proud of our community cafe. We did a fundraiser this uh, over the thanks, started over Thanksgiving and it ran into early December and we raised over $50,000 to help us with our budget for community cafe next year. In addition to the success of that fundraiser in bringing dollars to our program, it also gave us an opportunity to educate our public. Uh, many people were asking, how do you know these people need this food? And, and honestly, we don't. But we have learned that need has many faces. It's not just financial. There is so much going on in our community. People need relationships, connections. They need, they need that interaction with people. So Community Cafe helps meet nutritional needs and um, social needs for our people when we really need it. Summer food was another great success. Uh, we served a record number of children in summer food this year. We served over, we served 9,072 meals this year, and that's compared to 5,613 last year. Uh, again, this program moved to being a, a pickup style lunch. Uh, the kids and their parents came to the east door every day and they would pick up their, their meals. Um, the, the staff enjoyed the program as much as the kids did. Um, getting to know and getting to see the kids was great. And hearing their interaction and their reception of the summer food was good. Um, if you look in, in the report, it says we did a survey with the kids at the end of the year because we wanted to know what they liked and what they didn't like. And um, Taco in a bag was their favorite. And then they liked the cheeseburgers, the kids. When we had cheeseburger day, they knew they had to cook extra in the kitchen. And then uh, third place, I was a little surprised, but I was really happy to see this. It was meatballs, mashed potatoes, and gravy. They liked that. So we're looking forward to our summer food program again this year, and uh, Community Cafe continues to run strong. Thank you for the updates and the report for very successful food programs here at Bacchus. Next report to, to consider is the memberships. It's on uh, page 34 and 35. Um, any questions or comments on memberships? We continue to, to have lots of support, obviously, in the community, and, and you know people are joining that we've never you know, knew had seen before. So obviously the word is getting out and is not necessarily the dollar, the monetary amount per person, but it's the participation. Once you're a member of something, then you feel like you're part of something you want to contribute. And it does happen whether you become a volunteer or attend programs or send your kids, it's all part of a good thing. <clears throat> the last report is contributions and donations and that's found on page 36 through 39. We continue to enjoy the seat sponsorships. It's, uh, it doesn't sound like a big thing, but really it kind of is. And it gives the people that uh, have donated, as well as the people who are honored, kind of a legacy within Bacchus. And the fun part of it is a lot of these people that have paid for or have been mentioned for the seat donations attended school in this building, which makes it really special. That concludes the reports. Uh, anybody have any comments or questions they'd like to address at this time? If not, I am seeking a motion to approve all of the reports by committee. 
Patty, second. Julie, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? The reports are approved. Next item on the agenda is old business. Is there any old business that anybody would like to bring up at this time? If not, we'll move on to the, the last item, and that's new business for the annual meeting. Any new business? Well, um, well first of all, I'd like to uh, thank Bob for stepping in for me at the line. I picked up a nasty head cold, and I didn't think it would appreciate me sharing it with you. And thank you to uh, Lois and Wah and Julia and Alyssa for setting everything up. <coughs> Uh, my uh, new business is to recognize Lord Merrill uh, for the 13 years that he has given the back. Uh, when we first moved back to town, the only thing I knew about Bacchus was that there was a program in California now and then. And Marv and I attended. We met Ward, Linda, visited with them. And it was so obvious, you could instantly tell how dedicated and passionate he was about Bacchus. And it made it easy to become a volunteer, and that dedication and passion is infectious. 13 years, Ward's given Bacchus his all. I don't think Bacchus would be the same without his hard work and leadership. Ward's got kind of a, a dreamer quality about him, and that dreamer quality is infectious. And we can see that in the results and things that have happened, happened to Bacchus over the years. His last year probably was his most challenging. 2020 was challenging for many people. Uh, his strong leadership and the teamwork of, of the employees of Bacchus uh, helped shift, shift the focus and help Bacchus have a strong performance, even with all the obstacles we face this year. Obstacles like our programs being canceled, our renters not having people in their offices, um, uh, income being down, grants being reduced. New grants were found, and that has shifted and became a major player in the food needs of our area. The Alexander Baker Project is still viable. Lord, we're going to miss you. Thanks for the strong foundation that you helped lay for Bacchus. And Bob, uh, I'll turn it back to you. Some other people may have a few words. Thank you, Tim. Does anybody else like to make any comments? Ward is here in the building. What? Ward, um, I usually don't write down in pages, <laughs> but today I have to type out. When I first met Ward, um, it was in May of 20, 2008. Um, I was interviewing for the volunteer coordinator position here at Bacchus. Um, I don't know, Patty, you remember us way back then. Um, although I was not hired for the position, but I was very impressed by Ward and his commitment to Bacchus and to our community. I experienced his enthusiasm again when I met, um, I was elected to a Bacchus board of director in um, October of 2008, um, and I was also a treasurer of Bacchus Board. And then I had the uh, privilege to work with Ward every day as Bacchus Business Manager um, in early of 20, uh, 2009, as you know, that's 12 years, and uh, it's 12 years working with Ward. I have witnessed uh, many adm admirable qualities from Ward um, however, there were three things that the quality that stand out um, to define Ward. Ward is a, a compassionate. He cares for everyone who walks through the office door. Um, if he knows that someone needs something, whether personal or professional, he will go out of his way to meet that person's needs. Once um, an employee needed transportation to and from work, or pick up and drop off that person every day as long as needed. And Ward is very generous. Uh, 
um, whenever there's a request to use Magnus facility to hold a fundraiser to help a medical bills or emergency from our town or any reason, he offered a facility to use without charge. And I remember our conversation um, with Ward when we first had the um, performing arts series and we will talk about offering uh, complimentary tickets to a certain group. And I um, said, that's a great idea, let's give a couple one ticket. And Ward looked would look at me and said, then who's gonna come and who's not coming? And I said, well, they, both of them will come. They have to buy another ticket, that's the business. <laughs> <laughs> Again, very gentle and Ward looked at me and said, be nice, wah. Wow. <laughs> so we, we give two, two tickets for the couple. Uh, <laughs> And um, Ward is very dedicated to our community and to Bacchus. His dedication led him to excel in his job as an executive director. He made sure that all directives from the board were carried out in a timely fashion. He kept the board of directors aware uh, and involved of all the issues and everything we do here at Bacchus. Ward was very dedicated to his staff and found opportunities to all of us to enhance our job skills. He also made sure that we are comfortable coming to him to share our concern, our problems, and his door was always open. And finally, as we all know, Ward loved to tell stories to the Baptist Community Center and is very proud of his staff. On one occasion, there was a new guest who visited Bacchus' office. They spent some time with Ward, becoming acquainted with Bacchus. After, when I was introduced to the guest, I was surprised to learn that this person know much about me and they were very excited about the community center. Ward's enthusiasm for Bacchus appears to be very contagious. And in closing, I am um, reminded of an old Vietnamese saying, um, that means translated to English, mean when you eat the fruit, think of the person who planted the tree. As Baptist community continue to grow and provide needed service to our community, we must remember all the work and dedication the world provided for us to enjoy now. Well, it was prevalent to work with you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else want to make any comments or statements? At last year's meeting, Ward had just announced that he was going to retire. And somebody uh, said something about he had big shoes to fill. And he looked at his feet and he said, no, not really. I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> Ward, uh, so many times you have told us all, you only get one chance to make a good first impression. I've heard you say that so many times. I remember the first time that I met you, and actually I didn't meet you in person the first time that I met you. You were up on the stage over there and you were announcing a program. Uh, you, you walked through, you walked all of the guests through the program, and you, at the end of it, recited a poem. And my very first impression of you was a good one. You spoke with confidence and eloquence. You spoke from your heart. It was easy to see that you were a man to be trusted, that you were a man of your word, you were a genuine soul. It has been a pleasure for me to have had so many opportunities to work with you over the years. You always have just a minute to talk, although those aren't usually just a minute, most of the time it goes for quite a while. You treat people with respect and regard. You are very caring and compassionate and you are very kind. The people of our community trust and respect you. They see you as a leader. We are very proud of the work that you have done, of the person you are, and the difference you have made in our community. Thank you for everything and congratulations on your retirement. Thank you. Now comes the award ceremony part of the program. Patty? Thank you. Um, 
glad to see some smiling faces out there tonight. Um, we, we were exceptionally thrilled when Ward came to his first meeting and he thought he'd check out Bacchus and be a volunteer. And we thought, oh, this guy, he seems really enthusiastic. Maybe we can use him somewhere. Well, we kept him for 13 years and we were extremely fortunate and grateful to have him for 13 years. He says it's the best job of his life and I, I, don't, I don't know, he, he did a bit of complaining about all that grant writing he did last year. But it was a record year. He brought in, uh, with the help of Lois and Wah, almost $300,000 in grant writing. But Ward, if you could come up, we have a little presentation for you. It's not much, but um, you can hang it in your uh, dining room. <laughs> is that where your office is lately? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's just a little memento for back, from Bacchus about our appreciation for your years of dedication and service. And our community is extremely proud and happy to have you here. Well, I'm a little overwhelmed by this, to tell you the truth. Uh, plus, I'm only parked in a 15-minute parking spot over in Forest Land. I've got to go. But, uh, oh, okay, sorry. Uh, thank you, Patty. And uh, Tim, thank you as well. And Wa. I wasn't even sure Wa really liked me all these 13 years, but she said a lot of nice things here tonight. So, <laughs> thank you. You know, and I, Patty, I guess you said this again, too, that uh, I, I always say this is the best job I ever had, and that's really true. And uh, it's, you know, there hasn't been a day that I haven't enjoyed coming to work here in those 13 years. And, uh, you know, you're right, this has been a, a tough year, I think, for everybody here, but Bacchus has come through pretty good. It was an exhausting year of grant writing with... Uh, I think usually we wrote maybe uh, eight or nine grants, and I think uh, this year was it uh, was it twenty some, I think. So it took a long time. But in any case, thank you. Um, most of you know my wife and I are on a different journey right now. What what it looked like it was going to be a a really neat retirement, uh, with traveling and seeing grandkids and so forth has turned into entirely something else. A lot of you folks have been really generous with that. Uh, cards, letters, and well wishes, and things like that. Our good friend Janelle Feller is uh, over with Linda right now, and our uh, older son also came up this morning to visit. You kind of know you're getting older when your son loans you his car, he tells you to be careful with it, be sure to lock it. He didn't tell me what time to be home with it, though, so. Uh, but anyway, uh, I want to thank a couple of people that are sitting here, too, uh, and maybe some that aren't sitting here, but. Isaac Meyer, my good friend and colleague back there that's worked so hard <clears throat> since really 2017, Isaac, I think, on the AV project. And although it didn't get uh, funded with uh, tax credits this time by the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency, has a good shot of that happening uh, next year. And this is the best shot we've ever had of developing that building as well. Um, Robin Bjorkus isn't here, but she was a uh, long tenured person here at Bacchus that was an immense help to me and to Bacchus and she's also been a great help during the COVID crisis and right now as well. I know a lot of you maybe have sent good wishes and things or looked at Caring Bridge. Uh, Tracy Lenzer, I have to thank you for the cherry pie you dropped off last Saturday. Uh, there are still, uh, still two pieces left which we may, may finish off tonight, but thank you for that as well. I'm overwhelmed. <clears throat> And uh, really appreciative of this. Uh, you know, there's so many folks here that have been supportive of Bacchus over the years. Ivan and Marcia Stewart, you know, thank you for getting that endowment fund kicked off with your, your generous donation. Uh, Pat Edison was over visiting yesterday with Linda. Thank you for also adding to that. Of course, it was Gordy Edison's uh, idea to develop that fund in the first place, too. So I wish you all well. It's, uh, it's nice not to worry whether the boiler is going or not. John is taking care of that. I don't have to worry about announcing up on stage, uh, <clears throat> anything here. So I drive by and I just look and see what a great building and 
what a great future it has. So thank you all. It has been my extreme pleasure to work here for 13 years. Thank you. Just so you don't become a stranger around here and, uh, you know, and wander away from us, in that little mystery box are two plaques for uh, seat, permanent seat sponsorships for you and Linda. Whether you sit in them or not, it doesn't matter. You'll always be remembered here. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. That winds up the annual meeting for 2020. Uh, any other additions, comments, or anything like that? If not, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. Tracy? John? Okay. Second? Tracy? Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, who knows what it'll be like next year? We're pretty innovative this year. Uh, and, I, and I regret to announce we weren't able to provide a meal like we've had in the past, but we'll think of something good and grand next year. Thank you for coming.